for those who trust in Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Genesis chapter 1. Ready, y'all? Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, today for this opportunity that you've given us once again to come before you, Lord, and to sing praise to your great and holy name, to give to you out of what you've so kindly given to us, and now to hear your life-changing word. We ask, God, that you would cause every distraction in our hearts, our minds, and this room to be pushed aside, that our focus and attention will be upon you, God. And we do ask you to give us eyes to see, ears to hear what your spirit has to say to us this morning. And we pray, Father, Lord God, that we would leave, Lord God, Lord, transform encouraged, empowered, Lord God, that we would be able to go out and serve you, Father, with all of our hearts, minds, and souls. And we thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. You know, um, man, humanity, is the pinnacle of God's creation. Um, people like to point out that when God created uh, us, there was no more creation. He was done. This is the, the pinnacle of it all. Uh, but we were created to rule the earth. We saw that, that God created man in his image, after his likeness, and he said that we would have dominion. He created us to have dominion. Um, but we, if we fast forward just two chapters into Genesis chapter 3, um, and I'm not going to read it because I got a lot of stuff I want to share with you today. But in Genesis chapter 3, Satan came and he tempted Adam and Eve and they sinned and they fell. And, and the scripture is clear that when man fell, we lost our dominion. And so, you know, now we're, we're, we're slaves to sin until Christ comes to set us free. So man fell, uh, we, God created us to, to, to be rulers and to do, have dominion over his earth, to represent the earth for him. We fell, Satan um, tempted Adam and Eve. And this is the thing that you guys, you and I have to keep in mind, that there is one that is as opposed to your prosperity, as, to, as opposed to you becoming and accomplishing God's will. There is one that is as opposed to your success as anyone could possibly be. And that is Satan. He is 100% he is opposed to you. He, and he hates each of us equally. Yeah. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter. You know, we, you know, we can have, we, we infight amongst each other as human beings. And we got, you know, we have fights, you know, going with races and countries and, and nationalities. But the reality is that when it comes to Satan, he hates each one of us equally because we're all created in the image of of God. And his mission is to stop me and to stop you and anybody else from accomplishing God's purpose for their lives. He is 100% committed to that. that is, we must keep that in mind. Jesus said it this way in John chapter 10, verse 10, very familiar. Jesus said the thief, he referred to him as a thief, and Satan has many names that he's referred to. And here Jesus refers to him, he says, the thief comes. Now look at that word right there, after, after comes. Only, right? That tells you that there's no other reason, to, you know, there's no other, no other agenda he has. That he comes only to steal from you, to kill in, in your life, to destroy your purpose. The only reason, right? The only reason. And of course, Jesus says, by contrast, he said, I'll come that you might have life and have it you know, abundantly. But we have to keep that in mind. And that's why um, Peter told his, his uh, readers in 1 Peter 5, 8, Peter said, understanding this, he said, you got to be sober, right? You got to be vigilant. Right? You, you know, he said you got to be clear headed. You got to be you got to have your head on straight. You got to be vigilant he said, because your adversary. Remember, he only comes to steal, kill and strong. He's walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And we need to understand that. 
and, and, and sometimes, and not sometimes, many times, you know, in our culture, and, and it's not just us, it's, it's, it's throughout history, the annals of history, that men, women forget that. And we begin to just live and focus on the, on the time we're living in, right? And, 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 if the, and if today, then we just want to enjoy ourselves, have fun, turn up, while Satan is, he's got his eyes on you. Yeah. And he's looking for that opportunity. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. And we got to keep that in mind. Satan was successful in getting Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3. We saw it got, got Adam and Eve to, well, we didn't see it or talked about it. He got Adam and Eve to desire something other than God's will for their lives. Something other than what God wanted for them. And I can't, I can't you know, say this enough that you have to beware of people who tempt you to desire things that God doesn't want you to have. Right? People encourage you to sin and to do wrong. You must be aware of them because those who do those things are being used by the devil. Doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad people. But at that moment, at that moment, they are bad. Right? I'll give you an example. In Matthew 16, 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. So Jesus began to tell his disciples, look, I got to go to Jerusalem. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to suffer these things. And they go, I'm going you know, to kill me. But I'm going to rise again. And Peter, you know, all Peter's thinking about, man, you know, we ain't going to let this happen to you, Lord. You know, you ain't going to die. I'm going to fight for you. This and that. And Jesus knows he came into the world. To, to give his life for us, right? The just for the under. He came to die for our sins on the cross. And here Peter, Peter starts to say, Lord, I'm going to do anything I can to stop this. You don't want this. You need to have another desire. And then in Matthew 16, 23, he turned to Peter and he said, my dear chap, you got a good point. No, he said, get behind me, Satan. Peter was a good fellow. Right? He went on to do, well, we, we just quoted a, a verse of scripture that he wrote, that God used him to write. He was a good man. But at this moment, at this moment, that he was trying to stop Jesus from accomplishing his purpose, Jesus said to him, but one person would do that. That's Satan. Are you with me? You have to beware when people are trying to get you to desire things that God does not want you to have or to stop you from things that you know God wants you to pursue. Right. Are you with me? you got to understand that because there is one who is as committed, Satan, as committed to your demise and to your failure as anybody could possibly be. He only comes still killing his When he came to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he had one agenda. When he comes to us, he has one agenda. And that's why the Bible says resist him steadfast yes. in the faith. Trusting in Christ. Are you with me? Amen. Now, we all, look, when it comes to, you know, sin and Adam and Eve, you know, of course, sin. And, and, and I've heard God say, oh, man, I tell you, Adam messed it all up. Let me tell you something. We've all shared in living out this fall. We've all shared in living sinful. All of us have shared in the fall. Now, I entitled the, today's message that you saw it earlier, you know, Rise Up. Because the, the idea of that is that we've all lived out the fall, living in sin and being dominated by sin and, and addictions and habits and not being able to, you know, have joy and pleasure in Christ. And but we've got to find out our pleasure in other things. That is a fallen mentality. We've all taken part in that. All of us. Romans 5, 12 says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men. Why? Because we're all taking part in it. All of us. Yeah. Right? Which before, before I move on, I got to make this, this point that I often think, to, think about. When bad things happen to us, and I say bad things you know, as, as a term of stuff we don't like. When things happen to us that we don't like. And sometimes, depending on the degree of it, sometimes we, all, we, have, we are tempted to ask, why me? Have you ever been tempted to ask that? Like, why me? All right? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you three things about that question. First of all, hope this doesn't hurt your feelings, but when you ask why, when bad things happen to you and you ask why me, first of all, I want you to understand that it's a selfish question. Because that question says, why me? Once you give this trouble to Somebody else. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, 
is an unrealistic question. I say that because if we have participated in the commission of sin, which we just saw, that all of us have partaken, and nobody in this room would dare say, I have not sinned, right? The one universal truth that I, no matter who I talk to, people say, nobody is perfect, right? And if we've all taken part in the commission of sin, is it unjust that we would take part in the negatives that come along with sin? Are you understand what I'm saying to you, right? I've sinned. Sin brings bad stuff in the world, but when bad stuff comes to me, I'm tripping. That's unrealistic, man, right? It would be one thing if I had never sinned. Jesus could say that, yeah. right? Jesus could be like, Jesus could say, why is this happening to me? After all, I'm sinless. But even when he took upon himself our sins, boom, death and destruction. Are you with me? <clears throat> So, when we face sickness, death, disease, trials, heartaches, God is not being unfair with us. As a matter of fact, if you are not in hell today, I would say that he's been rather kind to you. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm saying to you? Amen. Yeah, yeah. See, Psalm 103 verse 10 says, he has not dealt with us according to our sins. Right? Nor punished us according to our iniquities. Right? He has not dealt with me according to my sin. Not at all. He has not punished me according to what I really deserve. Thank you, Lord. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Lord. I've had pain, right? I've had loss, things of that nature. But he has not dealt with me according to my sin. My sin deserves way more than that. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Right. The third thing about that why me question is that as a Christian, whatever God allows into your life doesn't have the power to take your joy or your peace. So don't let it. As a Christian, whatever God allows to come into my life or into any other Christian's life does not have the power to take your joy or your peace because my joy and my peace should come straight from God to me, not through situations. Are you with me? Yes. Not through things. Are you with me? Yes. Jesus says in John 15, 11, these things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Amen. John, and then he goes on in the next chapter in John 16, 33, these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world... You have tribulation, but be of good cheer I've overcome the world. So I got challenges and difficulties in the world, but I'm in Christ. And so I got peace and he's overcome all of that. So he calls me to rise, to rise up and to rise above it. Right. So I have to reach for, for, the, for, the, for pills and I don't have to do things that, you know, make me, you know, turn me in a, in a bad, get me in a bad situation. I don't have to get, you know, tri tripped out. I don't have to make bad decisions, you know, because I got I got I got a, 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 a emergency situation. I have Christ. And he has promised to take care of all my needs. He has promised to give me everything I need. That's physically, that's emotionally, that's spiritual, that's whatever I need. He has promised that. His, his command is seek first the kingdom of God and all those things will be added to you. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Amen. Now the value of God's word to the Christian heart can't be overstated, guys. Okay? The value of God's word to the Christian heart can't be overstated because God's word has the power to override, override negative feelings that are, uh, feelings that are brought, brought on by negative situations. Because when we have trouble, we ain't got feelings that come with it. And those feelings sometimes get you down and they can get you anxious or they get you stressed out and worried. And so we need God's word to override those, those feelings. Because without God's word, you may be at the mercy of your feelings. But God's word gives you the power to override those feelings. In the Garden of Eden, we said that humanity fell and all of us have lived out the fall. And we, and, and the, a lot of things we look at and we talk about, you know, doing sinful things and this and that as a part of the fall. But the, the worst effect of the fall is that we could not enjoy God. 
If you read Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve are in the garden and they sin. And the Bible says God comes down in the cool of the day to walk, you know, to, to, to fellowship with them. And they started running. They couldn't enjoy him no more. And that is the worst effect of the fall, is that you and I could not enjoy God. I have seen people in a group, four or five people laughing and having fun. And a guy walked up and said, man, let me tell you all about Jesus. And you would think it was a funeral. Like what, what, what made him so sad? Right. What happened? The fall. It, 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 it destroyed our ability to enjoy God. I was looking at the Bible the other day that we uh, had in the bathroom a couple weeks ago. And I, was, I remember and I saw that Bible I was like, I like you. But at one time I did not like you. Right. At one time it represented bad to me. I was living the fall and I did not like that word of God. And now that I have risen up. That's what the resurrection is about. The resurrection means to rise, a standing up. Right? A, a, a rising and a standing up again. And so when, what, when we're born again, we stand up again. And we can begin to enjoy God like he created us to. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. <laughs> In the garden, humanity fell. In Christ, we rise to our rightful place. Thank you. In the garden, we fell. And all of, us, all of us live to fall until we meet Christ. Until we meet Christ, we might be able to put up a little church, but we cannot deal with enjoying God. We need other stuff to enjoy life. And there's a whole plethora of things that people choose, you know, and sometimes we, you know, we, we, we get down on each other. I mean, you need to stop that. You're just, this is all right. That is not good. And like I said, Satan hates us all equally, and if we can't enjoy Christ, it doesn't matter. It may, it may affect you a little bit in this life, but in the big picture, it's, it's either Christ or nothing. In the garden of humanity, in the garden of Eden, humanity fell. In Christ, we rise to our rightful place. Romans chapter 5, verse 19, Paul told the Romans, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. By Adam's disobedience, we've, we, took, we partook in the fall. Through Christ's obedience and our faith in him, we take part in the rising up again. Where we can actually be who he wants us to be and enjoy what he wants us to enjoy. Everyone has participated in living the fall. Let me say this one more time before I move on. Let me give you the, uh, the scripture that we have all behaved as sinners. Ephesians 2, verses 2 and 3. You once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. I told you Satan has many names in the Bible. Jesus called him a thief. Here Paul calls him the prince of the power of the air, who now works in the sons of disobedience, whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh. That's a sinful nature and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just like everybody, everybody else. Are you with me? We've all partaken in, in that fall. But guys, through Christ, we can live the rise to live victoriously over sin and to be able to enjoy God, to enjoy the God that created you. Like, like, enjoy him, like, love him, like, like, look at that Bible and say, I like you. Are you with me? To enjoy God, to like, like going to church is not a challenge. It's not a chore. It's like, you know, I feel funny if I'm not here. Are you with me? I enjoy God. We are created to enjoy the Lord. Ephesians 3.20 says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. What I'm saying to you today, guys, is time to rise up and live out the rise, to walk in righteousness and to live victoriously over sin. I reject every excuse for me to sin because I have the ability to rise above it. If I fall in it, I repent and rise up. I don't want your excuse because excuses hold people down. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. It's time for us to live the rise. Yes. We have the ability, he says, the power that works yes. in us. Yes. 
We have that ability. God's power is at work in you. When you surrender your life to Christ, you are born again. He gives you his spirit and his power is at work in you. And what Paul said to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, your, your job is to make sure you don't quench the spirit. Lord. Don't put the fire out. Because God puts a fire inside of you and you need to stay away from things, places, or people, or whatever that's going to quench that fire. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. Glory to God. Come on now. Glory to God. I thought it was going to be long, but it ain't going to be long. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to close. I could have read the scripture earlier from Genesis. I got time. Job rose up in his day. I'm going to tell you about a couple people real quickly. Job, did I put the Job scripture up there? Job chapter uh, uh, one? I took it off, huh? All right, thought I didn't have time. Job rose up in his day, and God said there was none like him. Right? He rose up in his day, and God said there is none like him. Noah walked in a day when everybody was sinful, but yet he rose up, and he, instead of living the fall, he lived the rise. And he walked upright, and God said that he found grace in his eyes and favor in the eyes of the Lord. Are you with me? Yes. Just because other people live the fall, you don't have to live the fall. Amen. You can live the rise. Are you with me? Amen. I guess I'm saying to you today, it's your time to rise up. Job rose up in his day. Noah rose up in his day. It's time for you to rise up, because this is your day. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And this is the testimony of those who are surrendered to Christ. Romans 6, 4 and 5, if you are surrendered to Christ, this is your testimony right here. Paul says we are buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the, that we ought to walk and live the rise. Right? But if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we're going to stand up again. Right? We will be in the likeness of his resurrection, a standing up, a rising. Are you with me? Amen. That is the testimony of those who are in Christ. They live the rise. They walk in the newness of life. They live the rise. Now the word of God must be our guide. It has always been in the guide. God gave uh, Adam and Eve his word, and that was to be their guide. And Satan comes along and he tries to say, look, don't trust the word. Let me give you some other desires. Commit to the word of God. You commit yourself to following God's word, and he will guide you on living the rise. God, uh, this is what Joshua says here. That um, Joshua 1.8, he said, the book of this, this book of the law, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. As he said, think it through. Plan and intend in your mind to live it. He said to follow it. Meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Guys, from the very beginning of time, it has been clear that those who depart from God's word fall. Adam and Eve in the garden. God says, don't eat off of this tree. Eat off of the rest of the trees. And they departed from the word of God and they fell. Yes. Right? Yes. It has been clear from the beginning of time that those who depart from God's word fall and those who follow his word rise. Mm -hmm. My encouragement to you today is Follow God's word and live the rise. Amen? Amen. Amen. We stop right here.